Hey everyone, this is Rick Oliva here. In this video, I'm going to go over uh, some basic two-hand tapping technique and how to create your own two-hand tapping licks. The reason for this video is there's a lot of books and a lot of songs and a lot of tabs that you can find online that'll give you ideas, but a lot of times with those, what's lacking is okay, I now learned this lick, but how do I apply that to my own music or my own songs or when I'm improvising? And so what we'll do is we'll just go through a basic rock chord progression and talk about how we can apply this technique to those chords, as well as talking about some basic fundamentals of, of the technique. So the chord progression we're going to use is just power chords. We'll use E, C, B, and G power chords back to an E. So just... <laughs> Like that. Now with the first one, we're going to use an E minor, or we're going to imagine that it's an E minor chord and that we're in an E minor tonality. So in that case, we would use an E E minor harmony over the top of this E minor or this E power chord. In that case, the notes are E, G, and B. Now, if you don't know the notes on the guitar, I have a video for that, so go back now and watch that video really quick. Um, but <clears throat> for those of you that do know the notes on the guitar, we'll start with, with it like this. The 12th fret uh, on the high E string is an E. Now for the two-hand tapping technique, what you'll do is tap with your index finger or a middle finger, or sometimes people will use their pick, but in this case I'll use my index finger, just like I was doing a hammer-on with my left hand, I do the hammer-on with my right hand. You'll notice that I'm muting these other strings, so that way if I don't mute them and I hit that, you'll hear this other noise come through from me tapping the guitar. What you'll see, sometimes people will put mutes on, on their uh, guitar, sometimes they'll use a headband or hairband or rubber bands. Uh, you can buy mutes that you put on your, on your guitar. I don't use those live, and so I, you, I might use them when I'm recording something, but what I find is if I practice without them, I'll find ways to be as quiet as possible, which helps me when I'm playing, uh, when I'm doing a live performance. So, first note, 12th fret, tap it with our index finger. Now, the next note we're gonna go to is this G on the third fret of the E string. Now, if I just lift up my index finger, you'll hear that the note rings underneath it, but, it's not as loud. Now, if I have super high gain or if I have compression, it might not matter. But once again, and you know this from my previous videos, I like to practice with a little bit lower gain so that way I can develop the technique without any other tools to help me. And you can actually even practice this on an acoustic guitar. Um, so I do that. What I find is, okay, so I turn down my volume a little bit. If I just lift up my finger, the next note is much quieter. So what I'll do for this technique is I'll actually pull off, instead of lifting straight up, I'll do a pull off. Sort of like if I was doing hammer on pull offs here, instead of just lifting my finger straight up, I actually pluck the string with my left hand. So I'll pluck the string with my right hand as I let go. Then I'll do a hammer on with my pinky on the B on the seventh fret. So that's the basic technique for an E uh, minor chord. Now I could also do it the other way where I go. So what you would do is you'd take this E minor chord if you want to de develop the technique and you'd play that a thousand times. So you can play faster. And you turn up your gain. And you get this really nice tone. Now, another thing that I like to do is uh, pull off my bottom note. So I might go E, B, G down to my open E, and then hammer on all the way back up. Can I gain up? You see, once you get it going fast, it really sounds like you're playing a ton of notes, and it's really not that hard to do. What I found with just about anything on the guitar is if you practice it for a couple hours every day for you know 20 years, it's actually kind of easy. But all joking aside, 
um, this technique really isn't that hard to get good at quickly um, on the single string technique. Now you'll see the people who do two hand tapping where they'll be playing chords and they'll be doing multiple notes with their right hand. That takes a lot more work. But this basic technique, especially using that open string, you'll see um, you can make it sound like you're playing extremely fast when you're really not doing a whole lot of work. So once again, we have the high E to a B to a G to an E. next chord in our progression is the C. So that's just C, E, and G. So all I have to do is take this B on the 7th fret and move it to the 8th fret. Now I'm starting to get into quite a, a good stretch. Um, and I, I don't want to go much farther than that, but I do the same thing. I could start with... Or go backwards. Add in that uh, open E with my pull off of my index finger. And I practice those two together. Now we get to the B. I'm going to think of my B chord as a B minor chord in this instance. Now, if I was going E, C, B back to the E, I might think of it as a B major chord and think of it as a dominant chord doing a 5-1 progression back to the E. But we aren't. We're going from this B to a G. So in this case, instead of having that D sharp in there for the B major, I'm going to keep it a D natural. And do that kind of progression without as much gain. You'll be able to hear the individual notes a little bit better. So the notes that I would play on this B chord, B, D, and F sharp, well, I could take my E, come down to D, I could play an F sharp here, and then I have my B on the seventh fret still. Now this is more of a stretch than what I really want to do. <laughs> so what I'll do instead is I'll think in terms of, okay, well, what if I had it as a B minor seven chord? Well, now I'd have an A. Well, much easier stretch. Also, this adds a little bit of melodic interest to this chord because I'm not just playing chord tones. So I add the A, and then if I add the E on the bottom, it becomes a B minor 11 chord. So that looks like this. See if I can get that note. And then I come to the G chord, and if I want to keep with that same type of idea, well, what if instead of this time, I'm changing it up a little bit, instead of going all the way down to the E, if I land on the F sharp, making a G major 7 chord. With an A. And so I can play my, instead of G, B, uh, D, F sharp, and A, I play my... D here, my A, A, my G, and my F sharp. So for the B chord, then on the G chord, adding a little bit of um, melodic interest to it. So the progression all together, if I start in my E minor chord, E, G, and B, C major chord, B minor 11 chord, G major 7 chord with a 9, back to the E. So then I could take that, practice it like this. I just keep working it up until I get it faster, faster, and faster. Now I'm going to play you an example real quick uh, where I'll play, uh, I guess, four on each and then I'll do one where you go uh, one time through where it's really fast. So the first one will be like... And 
the second time, it'll be, well, what if I'm playing a really fast riff and, and the chords just go. So you'll see what that looks like. So give me a second to get set up. And assuming I don't make any mistakes, it would go something like this. Okay, I made a mistake. I'm going to do it again. Okay, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, check out my website, rickoliva.com, or my Facebook page, facebook.com slash rickoliva music, or patreon.com slash rickoliva, and uh, good night. <laughs>